points to Stonefly and Flight School Studio for creating the most painterly and serene game about piloting a mech to fight giant bugs. Though more accurately, it's the humans who are abnormally tiny. Apparently the residents of Lilliput have taken to the treetops, using insectoid machines to bounce and glide along a vast freeway of leaves, stones, and branches. It's a world that could be ham-handedly described as Gurren Lagann by way of A Bug's Life. Except instead of insect socialism, Stonefly is about the aspiring pilot and mechanic Annika retrieving her father's stolen rig. Pursuing this family heirloom takes her on an odyssey across the canopy as she makes new friends, dodges big bugs, and becomes more intimately familiar with her own engineering skills. It's highly reminiscent of games like Mad Max, Rage 2, or Days Gone. The mechanically skilled hero roams the world, steadily improving the efficiency and offensive capabilities of their vehicle. But instead of continental wasteland, and really tedious gameplay, Stonefly is a verdant tapestry of natural delight. Complementing the stunning sights is the most soothing soundtrack. It's a wonderful arrangement of string orchestration, flutes, and soft choirs, with stirring harpsichord interjections for the grander moments. The combination of instruments lends the game a vast sense of scope, while not detracting from the gentle atmosphere. Don't worry though, if you're a super duper hardcore get good gamer rolling their eyes at another softy game for casuals, then rejoice, because the combat is absolutely not chill. The bugs can be really tough. For one, they're all armored exoskeletal hunters with jaws, claws, and caustic fluids. On top of that, they're bugs, so naturally they operate in swarms. When the big boys aren't trying to destroy you, knocking you out of the arena like it's Super Smash Bros, the little guys are trying to eat the resources you need to upgrade your mech and help your friends. Except no matter how annoying it is getting launched out of bounds, even when you totally could have glided back safely, Annika is still an environmentally conscious girl. She's not willing to just paint the forest with arthropod blood and call it an evening. She wants the player to consider the ecosystem, and honestly, good for her, because being a tree hugger is so much more fun than you'd expect. Because you can't kill the bugs, you instead need to knock them out and then knock them off whatever platform they're on. Annika's rig has explosive pellets that force most creatures onto their backs and a wind blaster to push them away. Along the way, Annika comes up with more interesting offensive tools that help her defeat her enemies more quickly or maintain airtime more efficiently. Fully upgrading the rig actually represents an interesting narrative conflict too. If Annika can design powerful mechs, one's even more powerful than her father's, then why is she still going after it? We're at a point where her talents have vastly outpaced her father's sentimentality for the past, yet she's risking her life for a machine she's long since outclassed. It's a thoughtfully constructed narrative detail that prompts some very relatable growth for our protagonist. We're given a mechanical reminder of her ambitions and a subtle indicator of how living with her father has stifled her potential. Of course, it helps that Annika is so organized. One thing I appreciate about Stonefly is how efficient its systems are. The whole game makes upgrades and resource management as user-friendly as possible, preventing any grind from derailing the story pacing. This is especially welcome in a modern gaming landscape, where players are dropped into a sea of menus and charts and asked to organize them all. Stonefly makes this whole process so much easier. New mech upgrades are displayed prominently across one page, so I know exactly what I need. If I need to grind materials to get those upgrades, then I don't have to roam the levels and farm transient mineral deposits. Instead, I can track down an Alpha Aphid, a massive flying creature with mounds of resources on its back. To keep the grind engaging, the Aphids house hostile insects and several wind hazards. With strategic use of the right abilities, I can quickly gather all the raw materials I need and easily trade them in for better parts and refined materials. Which brings me to my favorite design choice. The menu for purchasing refined materials tells me precisely how many I need across how many different projects. Instead of crossing back and forth between menus to keep track of each item in my head, I have the exact number I need right in front of me. If the grind isn't going away, 
If games big and small still insist on having these crafting and collectathon elements to them, then I appreciate how Stonefly saves time and cuts down on second guessing. My one big critique, my one preoccupying grievance with this game, is that the dialogue's presentation is incredibly flat. I don't just mean that the dialogue isn't voice acted, voice acting is expensive. I mean that there's no audio visual cues tied to the dialogue. There might be a faint click with each new text box, but it's definitely not as explicit as it would be in most other games. It's a weird thing to point out, I know, but its absence was shockingly noticeable. In Stonefly, important dialogue can randomly surprise you, and cutscenes are uncannily silent. The absence of any dialogue cues is awkward, and without a recognizable flow to the discussion, the conversations are harder to focus on. Overall, it's a weird omission in an otherwise thoughtfully designed game. And I mean that. Stonefly was an enjoyable ride through a lush and natural canvas, merging its beautiful imagery with tense combat and highly intuitive design. Like nature itself, Stonefly alternates between pretty imagery and stressful dangers. So if you don't mind a little grinding, a fussy knockout system, and some alienating dialogue, you'll be in for a pleasant few evenings in the trees. <laughs>